the last several years, there have been a number of different education measures, but we haven't seen a lot of the big type of education bills we used to see, but that's kind of changing this year in terms of, along with the landscape of how education is carried out. It is, and you're right. We've had some major things in some years past. We had a couple of years when we passed large education bills relating to the transfer of students, largely in St. Louis, but they had major additions to them all the way from engaging the private sector as a part of the public education model and other reforms that we thought would have given parents some choices as they sought the very best education for their children. This year, we have a number of bills. Last year, I carried a bill that was a reading bill to make sure that Missouri students are reading well. Over half of the students in Missouri are reading below grade level. Most any parent will tell you that if their child can't read, they're not going to be able to learn other things as well. They don't do as well in math. They don't do as well as subjects that you might feel were unrelated. One young lady testified in a hearing this week, she loves math, but that she was struggling with it because she couldn't read, and a lot of the problems that they had in school were word problems, and it made it very difficult for her. And just, you know, things like that, some of them seem to be anecdotal, but they're reflected in that statistic that less than half of Missouri students are reading at grade level. So we can't really deny that we have an issue. This was a piece of legislation last year that would have guaranteed that if a student wasn't reading, they got extra help until they were able to read at grade level, and that would have lasted throughout their entire high school career. It would have actually begun in the first grade in terms of the evaluation hearing in the Government Reform Committee this week. The testimony, especially from students who were testifying about how their struggles for reading were overcome and how important this bill was to them because it would have meant that they would have been able to learn how to read sooner. Some of them were dyslexic, and there are, of course, other reasons why some children just learn slower to read and need extra help. That's a bill that we will be working on this year. I presented a bill on some reforms to our charter school operations that came out of a task force the governor had appointed earlier. That task force brought in their recommendations about updating our charter school regulations and the statutes that govern those charter schools. I reviewed all of those recommendations and incorporated virtually all of them into a piece of legislation that would then make those a part of the statutory language that addresses charter schools. I think that has a lot of potential for helping to improve the options that are available to parents where charter schools are are available. Many times these education bills face what some people might term the usual suspects, if they are familiar with that movie, is that the education education establishment routinely comes out very strongly against any of these. We had a hearing on the education savings account bill a few weeks ago, and that bill's been on the calendar and has been laid over for the time being, but will be taken up hopefully soon to try to address that. I'm receiving emails mostly from the education establishment saying, you know, oppose that, vote no on that. It's interesting that the people who are in charge of providing education to our children are opposed to these choices, and its parents, the people that are the consumers of education, seem to be very strongly for them. I know when I think about how most people are familiar with what used to be a magazine, now it's more of a website, Consumer Reports. I took Consumer Reports for years as a young person. If I was going to make a purchase, I wanted to know from a consumer side what this product did, not just from the producer side. And that's what that magazine focused on. Anything that they tested, they bought outright. They didn't take the manufacturer's word. They tested everything. That's, as consumers, we want. We don't want to just trust the people who are the manufacturers for what their product does. But that's what we're asked to do in education. The so-called education experts say just trust us. We really know what we're doing. Don't listen to the parents. The parents are the ones that are consuming this. Don't listen to the students. Listen to us. Today, online, we have customer assessments, purchaser assessments of everything. You can go to virtually any product on the internet. You can read what the manufacturer, whoever's offering this product for sale, says about the product, and then you can go down below and read all the comments of the people who have purchased the product and how satisfied they were and how satisfied they were with the seller. And we take a look at those because we know that there's usually more to the story than just what the person who is selling the product has to tell you. Those online comments and critiques are essential to making wise purchases. But in the area of education, those people that produce that product say, don't listen to anyone else, listen to us, and we're telling you this is not a good idea. When you have lines of parents and students that come up and say, let us have this opportunity. Let us go to the schools that really align with our needs. Let us send our children to places where they can be successful. I talked to a mother 
mother this week who had four children, I think. Three of those children have done fine in the public education system. One of her children has not, has had some real struggles, and she's tried and tried to work with those public schools to address the needs of her child and simply was unable and finally had to put that child in a private school at significant expense because the public school was simply either unwilling or unable to address the special needs of that child. And so it's just interesting that we will allow the manufacturer to be the final authority on education when customers are saying we want something else and we want something different. I just found that to be a little bit, I guess, offensive.